Hey, what's up? This is Norris again, and today we're going to be doing a so long for swimming trunks. Now, summer is approaching, and I know you work hard all winter long to get those abs in place. So I have the perfect PDF pattern to get you through the summer in a stylish way throughout the entire summer for all the pool parties. So the PDF pattern we'll be using today is called the Beckham, and it comes from our Social Dev pattern collection. So in order to get the pattern, look in the link in the description box below, click it, purchase it, and follow along. Let's get started. Okay, so before getting started, I'm going to go through all the pattern pieces. You're going to need the upper front, the mid front, and then the lower front. The lower front is, consists of either a long version or a short version. So I did one long and then I traced this off to make a short version. So you either can make the long pair or the shorter version. I'm going to be making a shorter version, so I'm going to be using the lower front short version of it. And then next, you're going to need the back, upper back, mid back, and then like I said with the front, either the long or the short uh, back. Just keep in mind, if you use the short version of the front lower piece, you want to use the short version for the back. You don't want to have one long for the front and then a short one for the back and vice versa. You want both of the length to be the same. So for all the back um, individual pieces and all the front individual pieces, you're going to be cutting two of each one. Next we have the waistband, you're going to be cutting one. And then next you have the front lining piece, you're going to cut one on the fold. The fold is right here. And then for the back lining piece, you want to cut one of these on the fold as well. Last but not least, we have the back pocket and the back pocket flap. You're going to cut one of each of these and one of just the back flap and interfacing. You're also gonna need a one inch elastic for the waistband and a quarter inch elastic for the inner lining. Also jawstring for the waistband. And for me, I'm gonna be using two snaps for my back uh, pocket flap, just so you can snap down into the pocket. You don't have to use uh, snaps, you can use Velcro if you like to, but for me, I'm gonna be using snaps. Also, before getting started, you want to cut your front and back lining pieces out of nylon mesh. This nylon mesh stretches pretty good, it's breathable, and it dries very fast. Okay, so as far as fabrics, I'm gonna be using a quick dry polyester. Um, of course, these are swim trunks, so they're gonna be in water. And this is um, some of the best material to use when dealing with swim trunks. Okay, so once you cut out all of your pattern pieces out of fabric and also your lining pieces, all of your nylon mesh, we can get started. Okay, first you're gonna take your upper front and your mid front pieces and we're right sides facing. We're gonna pin them just like this. Okay, so once you have it pinned, we're going to stitch this across using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning and end. And like I said before, we're gonna be using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the end. Okay, so I stitched this together. I went ahead and surged my seam. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. And then I press my seams down. So it looks like this. Next, you wanna take this section here and we're right sides facing. You're gonna pin it to your bottom piece. Okay, once you have it pinned, just like we did the first two pieces, we're gonna stitch this across using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you do that, we're gonna come back and continue. Okay, I went ahead and did uh, my last seam and I also surged it. And once again, if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch to finish. And it looks just like this. So once you have one panel of your front completed, you wanna take your other three pieces and sew them up the same exact way. Once you do that, we're gonna start on our back. Okay, so before moving on to the back pieces, uh, when you have your front two piece panels done, you want to take them and right sides facing, lay them over each other like this, and we're going to pin the inside. You want to be sure to pin at each seam first, especially if you're using contrasting uh, fabrics. You want to make sure your upper, middle, and also lower um, panels are lined up. 
all the way across. Okay, so once you have a pin with three eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch all the way down. Okay, now that we have our entire front piece pieced together, um, all of our seams are surged nicely and we have everything pressed, you're going to sew your back pieces the same exact way. So you want to take your upper, connect it to your mid, and then you want to take your mid and your lower, right side facing, and attach it to your lower. And then once you do that, you want to do the other side the same exact way. And then we're going to come back and continue. Okay, now that we have our back piece all pieced together, we're going to work on our back pocket. So grab your back flap and your back pocket. And for the flap, we're going to turn the fabric right sides facing just like this. And we're going to stitch down both sides using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we stitch both sides, you're going to trim this down to about a, a quarter inch. And we're going to turn the right side out. So grab your point turner or something sharp and point out your corners. All right. So we're going to give this a good press and then top stitch. Okay, using 3 8 inch seam allowance, we're going to top stitch and back stitch at the beginning and Once you get to the corner, we're going to pivot, turn, and keep going. All right, pivot one more time and continue. Then back stitch at the end. Okay, now that we have our pocket flap done, we're going to pull it to the side just a minute and we're going to work on our pocket that goes to the back. So first, we're going to turn over a quarter of an inch, wrong size touching, and we're gonna give it a good press. Once you press it, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have it pressed, wrong size touching um, at a quarter of an inch at the top, we're going to turn it right size facing at three fourths of an inch, and we're going to pin this down. Okay, now we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way down across the bottom and then up the other side. Once you do that, come back. Okay, remember we're doing 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, now that we have this stitch down and across the bottom, we're going to turn the corner in. So now we're going to give this a press across the top. And then around the sides that we stitched, we're going to turn over just where their stitching is. So we're going to press across the side and then turn the back up and then turn in the other side and give everything a good press. So give it a good press and we'll come back and continue. Okay, now that we gave this a good press, we're going to top stitch across the top using 3 fourths of an inch seam allowance. Do that and come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I've top stitched across the top, we're going to place it onto the back piece and we're going to pin. Make sure you place it where your markings are, so be sure to transfer all your markings. Okay, now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna add stitch all the way down, across the bottom, and then up the other side. Okay, I went ahead and add stitch all the way around, leaving the top open. And now I'm going to do some secure stitching on the corners. So start on one end, we're going to sew in about a, to about a half inch, back to the beginning. Once you get to a half inch, we're going to pivot all the way around. 
and we're going to sew into this corner right here. Back stitch at the end. So now we have an extra secure corner here with the triangle. Okay, now that my pocket is attached, you can kind of barely see it because it's all print, but I have it attached right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sew our flap on. I probably should have mentioned before um, I sewed this down, before stitching your pocket piece down to your back piece, um, you're supposed to add your Velcro. So if you're using Velcro for your back piece, um, this is the perfect time to put it on before you put it onto your back piece. You still can do it while it's attached, but it's a little difficult. Um, I'm doing two snaps, so I can wait until the very last end to do that. So adding the flap, right size facing, you want to place it where your markings are and then pin it down. So we're gonna stitch all the way across using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, like I said, we're using a quarter inch seam allowance, so back stitch at the beginning. Back to the end. Okay, now we're going to flip it down. And we're going to stitch this down using a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back to the end. Okay, now that our pocket and pocket flap is attached, we want to attach our front and back pieces together. So right size facing, we're gonna attach the inseam first. So pin. All right, so with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna start in the middle and go down one pant leg and then start in the middle and down the other side. Okay, so before sewing this down, I just want to mention if your fabric is a little bit longer on one side, only thing you have to do is make some small clips and it allows your fabric to stretch across the entire way. Once you do that, you'll be good to go to stitch down. So I'm gonna do the other side because I got a little bit of gap right here too. So I'm going to make a few snips on this side as well. I'm making about a quarter of an inch snips, so you don't want it too deep. And once you do that, it'll spread out. So starting in the middle, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, the same thing on the side. I'm gonna start in the middle. Back stitch at the beginning and end. I need to make a few more clips. The more clips you make, the more your fabric will spread. So don't do too many, it'll be too long. So you have to do just the right amount. Back to the end. Okay, now that we stitched across the bottom and surged our seams or zigzag, whichever one you're doing, we're going to close out our sides. So we're right sides facing. We're going to pin. Okay, so once you have it pinned, we're going to stitch this down using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance down one side. And you're going to do the other side the same exact way. So sew them up, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have our sides sewn down and pressed, we're gonna turn this right side out. And for now, we're gonna put it to the side for just a minute and we're gonna work on our waistband. So in the center of my waistband, I made a little snip to indicate the side where my buttonholes go or either your eyelets, whichever one you prefer doing. And I put two in the part that's gonna be going on the inside of the band. So for the front where the um, buttonholes or either the eyelets are gonna be going, this is the time now you insert your eyelets or make your buttonholes. 
Once you do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I got my button holes, and like I said, if you don't want to do button holes, you can do eyelets. So it doesn't matter if you have button holes or eyelets, we're going to continue. So with the right sides facing, we're going to take the ends, and we're going to put the ends together and pin. And with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch across and we're going to come back and continue. Okay, now that we attached our waistband, I opened up the seam and I pressed it. And then now we're going to take it and fold it in half all the way around and give it a good press. Okay, now that I've pressed my waistband in half all the way around, we're going to put it to the side for just a moment. And now we're going to work on our lining pieces. So with the lining pieces, the front and back are almost the same. So uh, I'm just going to say the right side is facing, although you probably can't tell. Um, we're going to pin it at the sides and also at the bottom. So now that we have all three sides pinned, we're going to stitch them down using a quarter inch seam allowance. Do that and come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now that we've sewn our sides and our bottom together, we're going to attach our elastic. So each side should be 14 inches total all the way around. So cut out two 14 inch elastic and we're going to attach it to both leg openings. Okay, so what we're going to do is place our elastic right on the edge. And using a zigzag stitch, we're going to zigzag it on. And remember, we're going to pull and stitch. Remember that we're pulling the elastic and stitching at the same time. Back to the end. Okay, once we stitch it down to the edge, we're gonna take the elastic and turn it in two times to hide the rough edge, and we're gonna stitch this down again. So like I said, we're gonna roll and then roll again. And we're going to turn in as we sew. Back to the beginning and end. Back to the end. And this is how it will look when you're done. Of course, you should be using um, the same color thread. I'm using the dark color thread so you can see it better. So once you get done one leg, you want to do the other one the same exact way. Okay, now that we've attached our elastic onto our legs, we're going to stick our lining inside and we're going to pin. So pin the side seams together. Okay, now that we have the lining pinned to the inside, we're gonna base stitch all the way around and come back. Okay, now that we have our lining base to the inside of our trunks, we can go ahead and attach our waistband. Um, just so you know, the side where the eyelets or your button holes are, that's gonna be the side where everyone sees. So you wanna place that right side facing to your trunks. We're gonna pin that down. Okay, now that we have pinned our waistband onto our trunks all the way around, we're gonna stitch and leave a two inch opening towards the back so we can insert our elastic. All right, we're gonna stitch this down using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So back stitch at the beginning and end. And we're also starting in the center back. Okay, now about two inches away from the start of our stitching, we're gonna back stitch. 
just to keep that opening so we can insert our elastic and our drawstring. So just take your elastic and measure it around your waist. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight. Just put it to a position where it's comfortable and then cut. So take a safety pin and pin it on the end of your elastic. And with that opening that we left in the back, we're going to take it and shift it all the way around to the other side. Okay, so now that we shift it all the way around, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to overlap it by half an inch. We're going to do the zigzag back and forth to secure it. Okay, like I said, we're going to take it and overlap it by a half inch just like this. And then we're just going to use a zigzag stitch to secure it. Okay, so we just went back and forth a few times. Okay, now that our elastic is done, we're going to insert our jawstring. So, pin it to the safety pin like we did. Okay, so once you have it pinned, we're going to shift through the back, making sure it's on the outside and not the, on the inside of the elastic. And then we're going to go through your buttonhole or either your eyelets. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other end. So take it, pin it, and shift it on the outside until you get to your buttonhole or either your eyelets. Okay, now that we inserted our jawstring successfully, we're going to close out that two inch opening we had for the back. All right, I went ahead and closed that two inch opening we left at the back and then I serge the insides. And the last thing to do is to do your one inch hem on the pant legs and you're all done. Okay, we're all done. I hope you enjoyed this pattern. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And also tag me on Instagram every time you make something from here at Norris Dancer Ford. All right, see you next week.